and today I'm going to show you guys how to make tofu using the beans of their version 1.0 with the box milk. Here I have what was two cups of dried soybeans that have been soaked for probably longer than normal but um, normally I do it for like 48 hours and I um, change the water once in that time um, but you can do it in 24 hours, no sweat. Cool, here's the main implements you're going to need. I use a Nutribullet, the large cup, um, extractor blade, a nut bag. You can use a cloth um, as well for this portion, as we were making the soy milk, but this I find works well for me. Measuring cup, um, a colander, and the pot in which my soy milk is going to boil. So I very simply put one cup soil and soybeans in there, fill the water up to the max line, and then I blend. Should have like a milkshake consistency and put it into your nut bag um, uh, which I keep in a colander which I then squeeze so that um, I squeeze the nut bag through the colander and it goes into the pot. Once you've got the majority of your milk out, you'll see like that batch gave me that, um, you're left with what's called the okra. Um, and what people recommend is washing that with water. So basically I'm going to put it back in there and pour some cold water through and squeeze it out again and it'll get you the maximum yield of milk. Another good trick I learned was using a potato masher to actually squeeze out um, the milk, which is really difficult to show you when I'm filming and trying to squeeze at the same time, but that's the idea. So you basically just repeat this process until you finish your beans. Uh, um, once you finish squeezing out the milk, I forgot to say, also chuck out the okra. Or well, you can keep it and make stuff from it, but honestly, you make so much of it that it's very difficult to keep like trying to invent ways to use it. We put it in our compost. So this is what I'm left with at the end of um, squeezing all the milk out and you can see there's quite a lot of foam on top. What I'm going to do is just um, scoop off the foam with this slotted spoon um, because what happens is when it comes to heat, um, when the milk gets to boiling point, it just rises up like this huge head of foam and if you remove the top bit of foam, then you don't run the risk of it, well, you lessen the risk of it spoiling your, your stove and trust me, getting it off your stove is not fun can see it's quite a lot of um, quite a lot of foam actually so yeah just FYI and now we just stick it on the stove um, for we've got to get it so I put it on boil like the hottest and I keep stirring with um, a flat um, wooden spoon just so that none of the sort of soy residue that's in the milk catches on the bottom um, so you got to just keep gently kind of stirring it um, it does take quite a while for this quantity to get to boil though, so don't um, don't run off and <laughs> do something else because you don't want it to boil up and go all over your stove in the meantime. Um, but yeah, um, just stick around in your kitchen while it's getting up to heat and give it the occasional stir. I just wanted to talk about coagulants before we go into adding anything. But um, essentially, like anything acidic, like these guys, are going to cause the separation of the curds. Um, but what people use traditionally is stuff called nigiri, or you can use gypsum, which you can get, you can check, it's 20 rand for like 100 grams, and this will go a long way because you use about a teaspoon and a half in this batch of 3 liters of milk. Um, gypsum is used in brewing. So if you go online to like these places like Beer Bros and other other spots, point is get hold of a made to bruise beer <laughs> and um, get your hands on this stuff because this has made a massive difference to how my coagulation goes. I have read you can do the same thing. I'm going to test it out with rice vinegar soon. Um, and then obviously I used to use lemons, but um, it gives it a lemony taste. So this is more neutral. This makes like really good really solid um, cloudy curds. Uh, if I, this is what the um, gypsum looks like. It's like a white powder. It looks like plaster Paris. Um, I'm dropping, I'm going to put like one and a half, this is quite a heap teaspoon, so I'm going to do one and a half of these in about um, 
I think it's about 150 mils of water. The key here is like don't stress, you can always make more and add it in, but this is sort of the quantity I've, I've been working with. If your coagulation isn't working great, you can always add more, so start with this. You can see it looks all milky when it's mixed, but when you let it sit, it will settle out. So before you actually add this into your soy milk, um, you must mix it up quite uh, rapidly so that it's in suspension when you when you pour it in. You can see this is the crazy you stop it before that thing goes over. Stop that thing. Stop it. Okay now that it's boiling we just turn it down to simmer um, and I like to simmer for about 20 minutes and it's specifically to make the taste less less um, beany and it, it basically cooks the beans because you don't you don't ever want to have raw um, milk apparently it's not very good for you um, imagine taking like raw butter beans for example and blending them up and then just drinking the the um, the milk it would be like undigestible for us so this is important so yeah 20 minutes one action Okay, so our milk is boiled, we let it um, simmer for 20 minutes and now I've turned off the heat and left it for a couple of minutes to cool down. Uh, it just mustn't be like boiling, boiling, um, but it's just a couple of minutes is all you need, a bit of stirring to release a bit of heat. Now I've remixed the gypsum so that it hasn't settled as you can see. Now the trick here is that you need to keep this spinning so that it's like um, in suspension and you need to mix the milk so that it is also spinning um, at the same time. Okay, so let's just give it a good whirl. Got the milk going nicely, and we're going to pour one third of this in. Okay, and then we're not going to touch it again after that. Maybe it was more like half. And then you put your spoon in just to stop the milk from spinning. And it'll pretty soon slow down. Now, the next step is to take your spoon out and just cover up the pot for 10 minutes and trust the process, which is a little daunting, but you've got to do it. Now the top is still liquidy, right? So what we do is we add a bit more gypsum into this. And we close it up again. Okay, so no, you can you can maybe just gently move it around the top. But honestly, don't stick it in and, and stir it up because you'll break all the curds at the bottom. Normally you get a bit more of a split so it'll look more watery, but um, I'm not sure if it's just because uh, my milk was cooling a bit too much when I was sort of doing this video at the same time. So it's fine, we're just going to spoon off the liquid and then go into the next step. just want to show you, this is kind of what you're looking for, is this very solid um, kind of omelette scrambled egg curd. Um, and you can see the water is like clearly split there. I took some stuff off the top, which I don't think had completely coagulated there. I'm going to try that in a different pot, but anyway, this is what you're actually looking for. Um, is a clear separation and these nice solid curds. And we're now going to spoon them over using a slotted spoon into um, the colander. I'm just going to do one example to show you. You can see how solid it is. It's like scrambled egg. And we place it in and you're just going to repeat that. Um, at some point you might want to take some more water off and just keep spooning okay, until, you're, until you're empty. Okay, just to show you, this is now like with the majority in the um, the colander, and this is how much water is left on here. So what I tend to do is just like gently drain off that water, and then scrape the rest of like the smallest curds in. Just a little update, I took that milk that, that was on the top, um, and put it back in the, the pot, you know, the stuff that hadn't coagulated, and I heated it up and it instantly coagulated. So I think what had happened was um, we'd lost a bit too much heat, 
because uh, it's pretty cold in our house and I've been buggering around with filming. So I'm going to add this curd on top of the stuff that's in the colander now. Okay, I added them on. Now, I normally just let this sit for, without a weight on it, probably just covered with the a lid. Mm. 10, 15 minutes before I then put the weight on. Um, just to let the majority of the moisture drain out before I then place it over the pot. Okay, so your last step now is going to be, I've taken it um, and placed it on my pot, well over my pot rather. So now we're just going to do the weights um, and then you just leave it for like uh, two hours minimum I'd say. Um, the longer you press it, the firmer it is and um, that's kind of the way it works. The first wrap is like, first wrap is like that, sorry, my dogs. Getting excited about a cock. And then the second wrap, like so. And then I place, because it, it's like quite wobbly and jelly-like, your weight tends to want to swing off it. So I normally put another cloth, um, like a square cloth, folded on, on top. Okay, so that is my basic setup. Pot, colander, cloths, pot for the other pot to sit on top of. And then it sits well and places pressure. It's pretty heavy, so it squeezes out a hell of a lot of water. Um, and yeah, just leave it for like two hours. So here we have... Um, our tofu, I'm just lifting it up so you can see it's quite nice and thick. Um, I'll cut it for you to have a look at it. So you can see that's 571 grams of tofu that has been made from um, five cups soaked, two cups raw. So there you have it's nice and firm. You can cut it into blocks. Um, it really is pretty solid and it is exactly, exactly how it, it is when you buy it in the shops. It is yummy and I'm just going to eat it like as it is. <laughs> mm. And last but not least, um, to store it in the fridge, um, I put it in water um, and then yeah, just store it in the fridge. And I, you know, I probably eat this over the next two days or two or three days. So um, you just change the water once a day. It helps just keep it fresh. And that's the end.